Welcome to Carlos and Lisa. I'm Lisa Remillard. And I'm Carlos Amesquis. Nice to have you with us. Uh, it's 2020. I can't believe it. I know. Gosh, it just came up on us. Boom. Just like that. It was. All right. Okay. We're, and we want to talk about traveling in 2020. Well, it's Where awesome. should we be traveling? Uh, this, you know, because my New Year's resolution is to go see some place this year that I have not been to. Besides that's the other not, New Year's resolution that I always keep. Yeah, explain to people what the other, in case they missed what your My New Year's your resolution for New Year's 20 years has been that I will not lose a pound. Right. And, it, and so far, so good. <laughs> I've been very, very successful with that. So now okay, you're going to is, add but not, But I do travel. want to travel somewhere that I've not been before. I think, you're, I think there's a lot of people that are yeah. in that boat. You know, travel is always one of those top New Year's resolutions. But the problem is, is that finances get in the way. Yeah. Lack of finances reality. get in reality. Work time off, you know. So anyway, there are lots of different places you can go um, to get over those hurdles. Yeah. There's lots of options. So... Gabe Saglier from Travel Zoo is here to talk about all the places we can go in 2020. Yeah, Hi. he's graduated to the A block. I, is this what? Is this the A block? <laughs> this I is mean, the A block. This is it's a new year, <laughs> new it. us, Gabe. I love That's it. what's happening. Welcome. Happy New Year to you Happy guys. Happy New Year. And yeah, listen, traveling is part of our resolutions for a lot of us, or at least we dream. It's aspirational, That's right? We want to get yeah. to somewhere new and exciting. It's going to be tough with you guys because you are very Stop. well-traveled yes, folks. Yes, we are. Yes. Uh, but you're also... Actually, I'm not. I don't like to go anywhere. Well, that's not, but, true. That's not no, true. I like to go a couple places. Okay. Tropical, you know I like I know her a trip to Yucaipa might be you know, <laughs> memorable. You know, never know. Is it, uh, you, tropical Yucaipa? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's the same. It's the new it's Yucaipa just for like 2020. The same. So where should people go? Um, all right, go, so though? listen, so a couple of, as, as so many great travel companies do, Travels puts out a yearly list of destinations we think are going to be special in the new year. Uh, it's usually five. This year we put... 20 destinations Ooh, oh. on our list. Because uh, it's 2020. Because we have our, our flagship newsletter is the top 20. Mm -hmm. It's the 20th anniversary this year of that list. It is 2020. So the number 20 just seemed to, to scream at us. Yes. So it's it's uh, value, definitely a factor here. But it's also aspiration. It's also giving people some alternatives, mm -hmm. destinations you may have heard of but never thought of going. Or maybe you've never heard of some of these spots. Yeah. Uh, and some are up the coast. There are a couple. Of, there's one here in Northern California. And some are, you know, Bhutan in, in, in Asia. Oh, wow. So uh, there's a, a nice little hodgepodge. But I do like, for example, I mentioned uh, California, Mendocino is on our list. Oh, uh, Mendocino? Yeah. Yeah. Really? You know, people forget that north of San Francisco, there's still like 400 plus miles of <laughs> <Yeah>. California still <laughs> yes. to go. It, yeah, it continues. Uh, there's this beautiful. wonderful part of yeah. Northern California that oh. people uh, often overlook. And Mendocino is a bit of an off-the-grid destination, two hours north of the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really getting a lot of buzz this year for a couple of reasons. First of all, 90 miles of beautiful, rugged coastline. Uh, uh, the wine scene there, uh, I love Napa, but Napa can be a little bit snooty for a lot of folks. Totally, Mendocino is yes. a great laid-back alternative to, uh, oh. to the Northern California wine scene. A, a lot of uh, tasting rooms have no tasting fees. Oftentimes the winemaker themselves, they're pouring at the tasting room. So uh, easier entry into that wine right. world. Plus it's close. And it's a good weekend getaway, especially yeah. like I mentioned at the beginning, if you don't have a lot of time off of exactly. work. Exactly. Fly into San Francisco and then drive it? Or that's what, yeah, that's, that's probably, the, for a lot of folks, that's the easiest thing to do. Yeah. Uh, a couple of the Bay Area uh, uh, airports and then just head, uh, head north. Have you heard of forest bathing? Mm -hmm. Forest bathing is a new Japanese uh, ritual that, that basically means you're going out into a secluded part of a forest <laughs> and just and you're, you're keeping your clothes on. But what you're, oh, maybe not, I don't know. But the idea is that you're finding a secret spot in the forest. All depends on the forest. Yeah, what kind of forest <laughs> do you want to go to? which way you're feeling that day. Exactly. Um, no, and you're, you're finding a, that, that spot in the forest that speaks to you, that allows you to just immerse yourself in nature and forget the world. It's, uh -huh. it's a Japanese trend, and Mendocino's embracing it because there are 24 forests up there, a oh, state yeah. and sure. national forests, including those beautiful redwoods up there. Right. Uh, so forest bathing is a ritual that <laughs> Mendocino's embracing. is becoming a little bit more mainstream. You're going to start hearing about this thing, folks. Believe me, you heard it here first. Okay. It's a thing. And again, Mendocino's so on our list for a variety of reasons, including forest remind bathing. Remind me that we're going to do an entire show on forest, forest bathing. bathing. Yeah, at, just some, remind, point. Just at remind. some point. We're yeah. Okay, do that, yeah. so where else? Where all right, so you want tropical? How about Curaçao? Uh, Curaçao, yeah. This is part of the what they call the ABC Islands, mm -hmm. Aruba, Bonaire, and then Curaçao. Uh, just north of Venezuela. So. Just north of Venezuela. Yeah. South, and even more importantly, south of the hurricane belt. Oh, so average right. temperature here year-round 81 degrees. So it's a little bit of a warmer uh, Caribbean spot. Now you're seeing uh, but it's face. below the hurricane belt. So there's like usually 365 days of sunshine a year without the threat of tropical Hur storms right. or hurricanes. Uh, still very off the beaten path. It's a Dutch Caribbean island. So there's a bit of a uh, kind of a, a 
European vibe to it, uh, a Latin American vibe to it, and a Caribbean flair to it, uh, still uh, unspoiled. And as word slowly starts to get out, Curacao will become more popular. United just restarted its flights to Curacao after a 10-year hiatus. So if United's doing this, Delta and American will probably follow suit. So get there direct? now before. Is it not direct? Uh, America, United's flying out of Newark, oh, I don't know. Uh, and you're getting uh, uh, some other flights out of Southern Florida. It's about Got a two-and-a-half-hour flight, three-hour flight Have out of been? Southern Florida. I've not been yeah, yet. I'd love to go But there. it's on yeah. my to-do list, yeah. and I'm glad we put it on there because it just brings, it, it sheds a spotlight to everybody loves the Caribbean. Yeah, uh, When sure. people come to our website to search for tropical destinations, Caribbean's always number one. Mm -hmm. In Jamaica, in Puerto Rico, with the Bahamas. Right. But here's just a great alternative. That, okay. that still and gives there's a good sailing Caribbean thing flight. going on there that you can get on sailboats and go from island to island around Curacao. Yeah, great food and great, and great yeah. parades as well. Yeah. So okay. Kind what of a, a unique destination. Uh, let's see, uh, Maui. You want another control well, destination? Yeah, we put and, and this is I really. Love, but that's a that's a staple. Maui's but a staple. You were just there. I was just there. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we spent Thanksgiving last year in Kauai for the first yeah. time. Now, but it's going to become a much bigger value proposition for folks this year. Why? Because more flights than ever before. Now, Southwest started this in uh, 2019, uh, yes. slowly but surely adding flights out of uh, you know, San Diego, San Jose, mm -hmm. Sacramento is going to be a part of that, that this year. So more flights out of California means mm -hmm. from Southwest, one of the top four airlines in the country, means that you're going to see sales right. throughout the year. So if you've not nice been job. to Hawaii in a couple of years, you'll notice that airfare is just compared to history, uh, where it used to be a $600 to $700 a round trip Flight. phenomenon. Sure. Now we're looking at three to four hundred uh, round trip okay. vacation packages that include air, also less uh, expensive. A lot of the resorts on the ground are sort of revamping their whole. The Fairmont Keolani there on Maui, they're now using gemstones on their facials, so very kind of forward-looking types of things. The uh, Four Seasons Maui is doing a classic in May that is like a world-class wine and food event. Um, so That's all my of favorite sudden, hotel in the world. I want you to know. It, it is a great hotel. It's a great hotel. Uh, in that whole stretch there in Wailea, which is on the southwestern part beautiful, of Maui. Beautiful, beautiful hotels there. That's on that of our go-to now, uh, mm -hmm. just a gorgeous destination. But again, more affordable overall makes Hawaii and Maui specifically. Right, a lot of folks want to go to Europe. Is there a place in Europe that's a real yes. deal? That that's it's a must-see. Sicily. Ah Hi, people. Yeah, people hey. Sicily. So Sis, I think you hear a lot about a buzz about Sicily this year. They've really, uh, they've uh, yeah, the, really the revamped old their country. Yeah, when, when we call it. <laughs> but you know, uh, there's a lot of chatter that's gaining volume now around over tourism. And you look at places like Venice, which I love Venice. Yeah, it's like walking so in a storybook people. when yeah. you're in Venice. But really, uh, it, it it's one of the places that that is dealing with a, a bit of a overcrowding, a, totally. over tourism. It's always very it's busy. It's always there. crowded. So if you want to if you want to sort of circumvent that but still do the Italian thing, uh, Sicily's going to become that great alternative. Mm -hmm. So Sicily's that island right off the toe of that yeah. Italian boot. Right mm -hmm. off the boot. Um, and these destinations out there like Palermo, these little coastal areas that's, that are still very rustic, very classic old Italy, yes. um, are just going to become a, a place for people to sort of ponder as an alternative to the Romes and the Venices further north. And finally, Asia. You got anything? in Asia? Uh, how about Bhutan? Oh. So Bhutan is aiming to become carbon, not just carbon neutral, carbon negative. Uh, and in 2020, <laughs> anything that's grown and consumed there is 100% organic. So here's this little uh, country uh, between China and India there uh, that is uh, aiming to be a sort of a, a cornerstone of the eco travel movement. So uh, it's a, you, you go through legitimate vacation companies. It's not the easiest place to get to, but you are like Friendly Plan is doing a great job uh, of getting these kind of curated packages out there, affordable actually. Interesting. Uh, but if you're if you're if eco travel is your thing, nature driven travel and things like uh, carbon neutral, carbon negative travel um, is, is something that's going to be on. I think a lot people buzzed list around. Sure. Then I think Bhutan becomes a kind of an interesting destination to put on a list like this. All right, very helpful, Gabe. Thank you so you much. Bet. And I yeah. am going to definitely look into this forest bathing. Yeah, the forest they, they bathing. don't. By the way, they don't forest bathe in Yukaipa. So you can't, you <laughs> so can't just, get that there. Thank you for clearing yeah. that up. Yeah, Cannot. Yeah, Gabe, thank you for that. Fantastic. Thank you, Gabe. For clarifying. Happy nice travel. Nice your passports are updated. You know, we got to yes, make sure you update right. stone yep. laps. Yep. You can, you, we'll, you will have you back for another A-block. He's the master okay. of the A-block. He's now the new yeah. master yeah. of the A-block. <laughs> I like the A-block. Like the B-block <laughs> is coming up. <laughs> I settle into the A-block. This is good.